Alright, so getting straight into it, here I am on Billy's plane. Billy kind of um, flew off into another matrix of existence, so he's kind of gone for, I don't know how long, maybe a couple days. But here I snuck in a little character controller, and whenever I press Q, I spawn in a random cube. And when Billy comes back, he's going to be absolutely fuming. And yeah, this is this, it's going to be pretty hilarious. We, we do some trolling here. We're doing a little trolling. And what I want to do is... Whenever I exit out and I go back in, the cubes don't really save, and that is what we're going to work on today: saving game objects with uh, the JSON, with JSON file formatting. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to ID our prefabs. So here I have a prefab folder, and I have all these cubes. All right, all of these cubes. Yeah, we're missing a script. I don't, what script are they missing? What? All right. So let's try this again. I have all these cubes. And I want, and I need to ID them so I can give the game um, a pointer to these prefabs so they can be instantiated at the save position and rotation. So to do that, uh, let's create a new empty game object, and we can call this our uh, let's let's just call this our world manager. And in your scripts folder, you're going to create something like an savable object library. And this will contain a static dictionary that we can reference to to um, instantiate objects based off of a pointer. And our pointer is going to be an integer, which is an ID. So we're going to create a public static dictionary in our savable object library. And it's going to have taken the key of int and the value of game object. And this will be our savable objects. And in our awake method, we're going to create an instance of these savable objects. So new int game object over savable objects, and we're going to populate it. But in order to populate it, we're going to create a serialized field private game object array, and this will be our um, uh, registered objects. And now we're going to need to make another script for our prefabs and that will, it will simply just be a container for data and it's just going to be um it'll just be a class we can just call it savable object id and it doesn't really need any sort of special functionality it can just take in a public int of id and now for your prefabs we're going to go over all of the prefabs we have here and we're going to add in a savable object ID class and we're going to assign their IDs. So I'm going to set the blue cube, blue cube to 1, the green cube to 2, and the red cube to 3. There, so blue cube has an ID of 1, green has an ID of 2, and red has an ID of 3. Now back in our savable object library class, uh, for, we're going to iterate over our registered objects and we're going to get the component of our savable object ID class and we're going to add the integer ID into our dictionary as a key and the game object that we have are iterating over as the value. So do create a for loop for an i is equal to zero. So send registered objects dot length i plus plus. And now we're going to create a, a variable here, call this int id to register equals registered objects i dot get component and this will take in a type here savable object id put that in there and pass and reference the id public variable and after that we can now take our savable objects and add in a new key value pair our key is going to be our id to register and the value it will be the registered objects i there now what we're going to want to do is create a public class in our player. Well, this is mainly for demonstration. You can put the class wherever you'd like to put it, you know, to help keep your code clean based on your circumstances. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to create the class in the player. So I'm just going to do public class, and this will be called the objects in a savable objects in scene. Savable objects in scene. And in here, we're going to take in another class. It's going to be a public class and call this savable object. 
and it will take in a public vector 3 of uh, world position, a public quaternion of world rotation, world rotation, and a public int of ID. And now we can create an array in our savable objects and scenes, so a public savable object array and call these the savable objects there. And in order for these to be um, put into a JSON file, we have to give them a tag and or like yeah, like a tag and it's gonna be of system dot serializable. And this is needed in order for it to be serialized into the JSON file. And we're talking all the position, the rotate like all the data that we are storing. Okay, so now every time we press X, we are going to look for all of the savable object IDs. So what we're going to do is savable object ID array, and we're going to call this, um, let's just call it objects in scene, equals find objects of type savable object ID. So in this case, using um, find objects of type in here is fine because we're not running this every frame so there won't be too much of a performance impact. Now we have our object and scene. What we're going to do is create a new instance of disabled objects and scene and we're going to call this um, objects object data equals a new savable objects and scene and we're going to assign the savable objects array to a new savable object array with the size of the objects and scene dot length and now underneath this we can iterate over the whole array and populate all the data we need to populate or like assign so object so we can create a new for loop for int i is equal to zero is less than object data stable objects dot length i plus plus and what we're going to do in here is assign the world position rotation and id of the savable object what we have to do is do object data that savable objects i equals a new savable object and we can just put all these parameters in here and get rid of the object data savable objects and there you go okay now if we go back into the scene and we hit play, we press Q, you know, spawn in some stuff, and press X. And we go into a project folder, and we hit refresh. There's now a saves folder, and we can see this huge mess, which is actually all the object data. So you can see, you can see the world rotation here, world position over here, and yeah, that is how we save all of our objects. Now we need to load them back in. And that is also very simple. So first we need to load the data here. So copy this over, system, save system dot load. And we put in our savable objects in scene. So out savable objects in scene and loaded object data. And the file name is objects. And with this data, what we can do based on the IDs, positions, and rotation, we can create a new object of that prefab. So what we do is for int i is equal to zero, i is less than loaded object data dot savable objects dot length i plus plus. And we're going to instantiate an object based on the ID using our savable object library here. And we can set its position and rotation. So we're gonna create a game object or actually no. Instantiate and we're gonna pass in Savable object library dot savable objects and our key will be load object data dot savable objects uh, yeah. i dot id and the position will be the same thing savable objects i dot world position and I dot world rotation. All right, this is kind of a mess here, but 
this is what it looks like so when I clean it up a bit here kind of kind of separate this this is what it looks like so we have the position rotation and the ID that is passed into our saved objects library which has a game object as a value with that will be instantiated and also when we load we're going to want to delete any existing objects so they so we do not interfere with our save so what we can do is we can run the same check here look for our saveable object ID objects and we can iterate over every single one of these and just destroy all of them so we can do for int i eight zero i is less than object in scene dot length plus plus objects in scene i and it's going to be put into a destroy function there and don't forget game object dot game object okay so now if we go back into unity and we press c all the objects that we had from our last session will then load and yeah I'll see you in the next video series or tutorial. Goodbye.